Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel. Today we're going to be installing the Fleece Cheetah Turbo on a 6.7 Cummins in our 2018 Dodge truck. Drop-in performance turbochargers are one of our most popular categories of products here at Thoroughbred Diesel. The Fleece Cheetah is probably one of the pioneers in drop-in performance turbochargers. They've been out for a long time. And as far as this product lineup goes, the Cheetah Turbos, this is I would dare to say Fleece's most popular products. When, when you think of the name Fleece, you're gonna think of Cheetah Turbo, so they're synonymous. Now, this video that we're gonna be doing is going to serve as our installation guide for turbo replacement on a 13 to 18 Cummins in their Dodge Rams. Uh, big shout out and a thank you to Fleece for sending this turbo up for us for our installation and our testing uh, on our 2018 truck. Now, the Fleece Cheetah for the 6.7s is going to come with everything that you need for the installation. Gasket is going to come with replacement studs, uh, the nuts as well. So really nothing that you're going to be wanting for here. We are going to show you Fleece's um, flexible drain tube. Uh, that we're going to definitely suggest that you use as an add-on with this turbo while we're doing our installation. So watch for that inside of the video. We're going to link you now to our unboxing of the Fleece Cheetah where we talk about some of the specs of the turbo. Uh, Charlie will put that uh, link up for you here. And let's go ahead and get started with our installation. All right, first thing that you're going to do before you start your installation, it's installation is go ahead and remove your battery cables. Very, very important on this job. Um, the passenger side battery is actually going to come out completely, but we'll do that once we get over there and we get to working on our air intake. But I like to start on the driver's side first because the driver's side is where you're going to access your radiator drain to drain your coolant out. So on our radiator drain, uh, it's again, it's on the driver's side of the radiator. I'm going to do a close up shot in here and show you here in just a second. But we go ahead and run a rubber line over to the drain. The drain's got a nipple on the bottom of it. You can hook a rubber line onto it and let it drain out through the bumper. On these style trucks, the 13 to 18 trucks, you have your radiator here and then your intercooler is angled at the bottom of that. Uh, and that's was the change of these bumpers to allow air to the intercooler, but all that. Um, but this gives us access to get a hose in here to our radiator drain, which we have done already. And now we're gonna show you how to get to it. So on the driver's side over here, you have your power steering reservoir. What I do, that's a 13 metric bolt that holds it on, is go ahead and just uh, remove your bolt and then just take my power steering reservoir here and I just move it underneath of my upper radiator hose and that gets it out of my way to get to the radiator drain. Radiator drain, driver's side of the radiator, looks straight down, you can't miss it. Um, there is the valve down there the valve itself and before adam goes in for that shot it's a 10 metric allen is what it is uh and the allen uh the allen portion of the drain is internal to the drain so have a 10 metric allen ready so i'm going to do your light for you adam so you can let's just get a little shot of it so i'm going to get Hope you can see this. So I've got our light on it and I want to use our little pointer right here and I'm just going to touch where the valve is. So right here is our valve that we're going for. Again, it's an internal 10 Allen. Uh, so we just get our, our Allen and we loosen it up and we allow our radiator to drain. All right, we're going to go ahead and start getting our air intake off here. First thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to unhook both of your electrical connections. Uh, right. And then there will be a little Christmas tree push pin on the back side right here to get it dislodged like so. And just go ahead and do all your 5 sixteenths, your three screws on the lid. connection at the air tube. And we'll just go ahead and bring the lid off of the air tube like so. We will remove our panel filter. 
and then we are going to remove our box now with these ram air boxes there is an electrical portion on the inside here and i'm going to kind of show you that as i raise the box up and get it uh, dislodged here so there's a 13 metric bolt in the front of it we will, we will remove that We're just going to gently pull up on our box to get it dislodged from its cradle. And as I'm bringing it up, just watch your wires, your coolant tube right here. And this will give you elect access to your little electrical portion right here. And you unhook it, and it's got a Christmas tree push pin on it as well. Get that out, and then we lift our air box straight out. All right, we're going to go ahead and pull our air intake tube out now. The air intake tube for this truck obviously attaches to uh, the compressor cover of the turbo, and there is also a line going to your crankcase vent. Uh, from this so we're going to bring that out in one piece as well so our air intake tube and our line going over to our crankcase vent right here there is a 10 metric bolt uh, that holds the crankcase vent line uh, right here there's a standard that it is that it is bolted to to hold it so we're going to show you that as well but uh, just using a long 5 16ths here to get down to the uh, band clamp on the compressor cover and we'll loosen that up and then we'll go ahead and bring this out as one piece with the um, with the crankcase line. Switch over here to a ten metric. And pull this bolt out. Now I have already uh, loosened up the line on the crankcase vent, so you don't have to watch us struggle with that. Um, the metal tube, I like to take the metal tube portion of it out. Just That just gets you that much more clearance um, getting the turbo out here. So a 10 metric bolt and we'll grab our clamp on the Crankcase filter line. Slide it back. We'll be careful with it. So now when we take our our intake portion out. When we get it off of the turbo, what we'll do is just work to get it out. And you've got enough flexibility in the crankcase line to get it freed up and pull your air intake tube out. All right, uh, we're going after the intercooler tube right now. So this is your turbo uh, discharge from the compressor cover going into the intercooler. Uh, 11 metrics on this. Again, we're just going to go ahead and loosen up and get it ready to pull out. We're going to talk about the battery tray right here for just a little while. Um, instructions will tell you, and a lot of technicians take the battery tray out of these trucks when they're doing this, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, uh, the turbo will come out with the battery tray in, uh, and I like to leave the battery actually on until I absolutely have to take it out because it gives me a place to rest my arms all the things uh, so you can guys can make all the old joke or old guy jokes there that you want to but i like to leave the battery in eventually i will take the battery out before i pull the turbo out because it's you know you set the turbo down you're kind of in an awkward position you don't want to make contact between the two uh posts but if you got them covered that shouldn't happen anyway uh, but for right now you all that are watching this that take the battery tray out I get it, I hear you, but that's not how we do it. 
here. So there's another 11 metric underneath. This is a permanent clamp, but the other clamp is on the, at the intercooler side. So we're gonna slide on the truck and loosen it up real quick. And then we'll show you bringing this intercooler pipe out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the intercooler pipe out here. Uh, I've got everything loosened up, clamps uh, loosened up. I've already got it. Uh, what I do once I get all my clamps loosened up and everything, I'll go ahead and get in the engine compartment and I will do, I will unhook it from my bottom boot from the intercooler and I'll get it uh, pulled away. And then I'll start working with it at the turbo, just kind of moving up and down there. And that will dislodge your boot. We got one. Oh, stuck aside there. to take it out just push it towards the bottom of the truck until you get past your inner your uh, ac lines and you can pull straight up on it and the pipe will come out be careful of the ac lines and there you are pretty good restriction in that pipe right there all right, and our coolant supply at the turbo here, we're gonna go ahead and take the banjo bolt out. And there is a banjo washer on the top and the bottom of the bolt, as you see there. Those, we have new ones that are gonna be in the kit with the um, the kit with the, the fleece turbo here. So those come with the kit. So we're just gonna go ahead and bring this coolant line out and get it out of the way. All right, we're gonna be removing the oil supply line now. The oil supply line at the at the oil filter head, uh, this is a two wrench set right here. So this will be 13 sixteenths and, and then uh, the 11 sixteenths on the, uh, 13 sixteenths and 11 sixteenths on the line side of it. Then of course, feeding oil into the turbo right here, 13 sixteenths here again. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that line and then take the line out as well uh, as you're, when you get done here. So go ahead and remove this oil supply line. Again, when you do this, you wanna use the, you wanna use two wrenches on it. And go ahead and remove it. So that's what we'll do here. And just set the line out out of our way. I've got a, uh, before I remove it, uh, I also like to leave it attached at the oil filter head here before I go for the turbo side. When I go for my turbo side, I will go ahead and uh, loosen the turbo end up. If the fitting in the turbo turns, then get a second wrench on it. Uh, usually don't have that problem with these. We'll go ahead and loosen that. Then we'll bring the line in, or the filter head in out as well and then remove the oil pressure line. All right, we're gonna talk about the wiring going to these 13 to 18 trucks as turbo. There are essentially three sets of wires going to the turbo. First is your wire that goes to the actuator itself. The next wire is the loom we were just working with. This is the wire going to the NOx sensor. And the NOx sensor wire comes around and it goes to a brain box for the NOx. You can see that right here. The black connection or where the NOx sensor goes into this, I have not found a way to get this uh, to get this unhooked from this from this box for the NOx. So I don't even fool with it. If you have to go the route of if you can't get your NOx sensor out and you have to take this box off. There are two eight metric bolts that go through here, have isolators on them. Uh, and then at the bottom to, there is a harness that attaches it to the main truck harness, the yellow tab on it, and that, you just pull it straight out like so, and that will release that harness 
from the from the Knox box there. But we're going to take the Knox sensor out of the out of the uh, elbow. You can see that back there. We're going to take that Knox sensor out and show you how to do that. Uh, so there is a wiring clip or there's a zip tie. We're going to cut right here. Then at the face of the turbo, you'll see there is a little silver clasp. It is thin tin metal. So we just release the bottom portion of that. And then that gives us the three wires free from the face of the turbo. And then over here, you have this little dandy clip. We're gonna to try to get to that well here that holds the three wires before it goes up to the actuator. This is uh, thin metal and it probably won't release with me trying to do it right here. But you just push it and then pull back and it should come loose. Oh, it did come loose. So those will unbolt there. There's a 10 metric bolt that holds it into the side of the actuator. We will remove that too, but we'll show you that once we get down by a splash shield. So yeah. Um, and then the third wire, I didn't talk about this. I apologize. Speed sensor wire. Speed sensor wire comes up right beside the comp cover here. And then it, it goes into the turbo at the, uh, at the cartridge right, right behind the oil supply in the and it is right there but that will come out with the turbo Knox sensor the way we're going to do it is coming out with the turbo but we will need to unhook the wiring harness for the actuator and it will stay with the truck when the turbo comes out so we're going to work through all of that real quick and get it unhooked and then we will be jumping down oh no we're going to do one more thing we're going to remove the intake air heater uh, solenoid. This is easy. Just take the two wires off. Your battery is uh, is unhooked that you, that you have done here. Uh, we're going to take the solenoid uh, out. This is for again for the intake air heater. Uh, we there are two uh, Torx screws that hold it to the battery tray there and there. We'll take everything off of it and we're going to get this out of our way as well. One more shot here before we kind of close out our wiring portion of the video the turbo speed sensor is hooked to the main wiring harness right here and you will just unhook that and i can't do it one-handed i'll try yeah i can't do it one-handed uh, so you'll unhook the turbo speed sensor which is right there and then of course the turbo speed sensor is going to come with the turbo but we've got our knock sensor wiring laid over here ready for it to come forward and then once i get the splash guard out I will unhook the uh, wiring portion at the actuator and we will get it. So uh, I removed, like we were saying, I removed the uh, <clears throat> the grid heater uh, solenoid or grid, grid heater relay, two Torx uh, screws that hold it into the battery tray, got all the wiring out of the way. This area right here is where the turbo is gonna come out once it's ready. All right, we've moved on down to the fender well now. Um, this is where uh, a little bit of your work's gonna take place now. So uh, last time that we were in there, we got our coolant supply and our oil supply lines off, all of our wiring harness out of the way. The fender well and the dodges, if you've done one of these before, you know they can be, they can just kind of be a pain in the butt. There are eight uh, metric hit, there are eight metric eight uh, screws, six along the fender well, two on the inside. Then there are a couple of push pins, Christmas tree push pins on the inside. You just remove all them. On this, on the, the new model Dodges, their fender liners, what I do is I start on the forward position and just kind of roll it out is the best way I found to do it. It just, it loves to hang in that shock tower. So I get it clear of the shock tower. Try not to put pressure on anything and then just kind of roll it out like that and that seems to work best for me so with the fender well out you can see you pretty well got a straight shot at the turbo from here what we'll do is we're going to make a couple connections we'll get our clamps off uh just get ready to take this turbo out all right we're going to <clears throat> go ahead and take the <clears throat> electrical connector off of our actuator. This uh, connector, the wire drop, is actually going to stay with the truck. But as we talked about, our knock sensor uh, wire is actually going to stay with the truck as well. But our uh, turbo speed sensor is going to come out with the turbo when it comes out. So 
To remove the connector on the uh, on the actuator, what you do is there is a purple uh, there's a purple clasp on there. You just pull that straight back. I'm going to have to get in the way of the camera for just a second. You pull that straight back like so, and then the clasp or the catch for the actuator is underneath of that. So once this is back. You just push back on this gently and then that releases it. So push towards the actuator. Just watch it and don't break it. Uh, and then just remove the connector back and forth like so. <clears throat> there is a wire clip that's on this turbo. It seems like every time I bring it out, uh, one of these out, they get caught up. I just take this off before I pull the turbo out. So just 10 metric, go ahead and remove that wire, uh, that wire loom keeper and, and uh, we just remove it and get it out of the way. We've moved on to the knock sensor now. The knock sensor, uh, the first thing I want to talk about with this is this is a really good time to go ahead and soak this with penetrating oil. This is a truck with low miles, so it's going to be a lot easier. You guys that are working on trucks, uh, older trucks that have a lot more miles, it's not going to be as easy as this, but this is the functionality of how uh, everything, of how this works. Uh, I find it easier to remove the knock sensor and leave it with the truck than it is to take the knock sensor um, box off and bring it all out with the turbo at once. And this makes it clearer to get it, uh, easier to get it out of the truck too. So around the knock sensor, there's a heat shield, okay? This is a heat shield. There's two eight metric bolts around that. We've already loosened them up. We'll go ahead and spin those out and remove this and remove the heat shield. And remember, we talked about penetrating oil. We put penetrating oil on the knock sensor and let it soak overnight uh, just to try to hedge our bet and what we're going to be doing here. And the correct tool, uh, in my opinion, to remove this, especially for you guys that have got trucks that are um, you know, they got a bunch of miles on it and, and, and rust build up around the knock sensor, uh, is to go ahead and use a seven eighths, uh, O2 sensor wrench. Uh, that works the best. The wrench, um, looks like this. The O2 sensor wrench looks like this, and that gets enough lands on the sensor itself that it should spin on out. I use the top of it the way it fits over it because it allows you to get it over the wire without damaging the wire. And then I put a wrench on the top of this, a good long uh, wrench. Um, I just don't go with this with the 7 8 wrench right at the connector because, or right at the hold down nut. This nut is separate from the body of the knock sensor. Uh, this this moves separate than the body. So uh, that makes that really nice. But uh, what I do is I use O2 sensor here <clears throat> and a long wrench and that'll allow me to break the sensor loose. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I've already got the sensor loosened up here because I wanted to make sure that we had a good clear shot of it when we did it for the video. And I'm gonna move my GoPro here for just a second. Hopefully that is back in shot. And just like so. Now, let me show you. Try not to throw your O2 sensor wrench. Let me show you what I was talking about here. You can see how at the bottom of that, on the knock sensor, that that bottom portion moves independently of the sensor body. So we'll go ahead and we'll spin that out. And we'll show you the knock sensor coming out of there. Just be easy with this. Hey, when you get to a hard spot in it, run it back down and then run it back out, down and back out. Penetrating oil is gonna be your friend here. So we'll go ahead and get our knock sensor uh, removed. Just show you knock sensor coming out here. We've already got it out. And then just, again, take your time with this, uh, running the, run the connector in that so you should see that hold down for your knock sensor it works independently of the body i understand that this can get corroded um you know at that point if you're trying to say if you're if you're dead set on saving the knocks the knock sensor uh you can hold the body of the knock sensor and then try to get this nut freed up of it but again this will stay with the truck uh so we're just going to move it out of our way then now we're going to go for our clamp at the elbow next we're going to be removing this clamp and then just let the exhaust stay in place and hang where it is. We're gonna go ahead and remove our clamp here. 
uh, 11 metric and we're gonna let the clamp enough to get us where we need to be penetrating oil again is your friend here the older the truck the more they're going to be stuck we got two ears of that already popped loose for us we got really lucky on that let's take a pry bar work on your third your middle ear uh, once she'll spin like that she's pretty well loose enough to do whatever you need there is a gasket inside of here that you will need to replace it does not come with the uh turbo set uh there but that's the nice thing about the downpipe on these trucks is they've got enough flexibility to kind of pry it and get it out of your way uh and give you some room to work so we just move the clamp down leave it with the turret leave it with the exhaust pipe and you're good to go we're under the truck now and what we're working towards is we're working towards loosening up the uh, bracket that comes from your downpipe that goes into your transmission hanger and your transmission cooler lines are going to be attached to this too it's got a 13 metric bolt that holds through it and i separate the transmission cooler line brackets i separate it from uh, this downpipe bracket because i want these to be able to move independently of each other so you've got a 13 metric that holds um, this bracket here and then you have two 14 metrics here and here that are part of the bell housing bolts I've got them loosened up and I'm gonna go ahead and remove them you don't need to watch me do that but once I have removed both of those bolts that's gonna allow our uh, our downpipe to just basically have uh, it's just basically gonna let it drop and keep it out of our way because we are going to remove that elbow where we showed you the knock sensor coming out uh, we're gonna remove that elbow for even more clearance there. All right, we're at the turbo elbow now. So we've got our down pipe uh, fully loosened up. And as you can see here, you need to do something now with that bracket off of it. You've got a lot of room and a lot of articulation from the down pipe to get away from this. I am going to remove the, um, the turbo elbow off of it here just to make it that much easier getting out just one more thing that clear and it doesn't take but just a second to take it off all right so again same thing here as your downpipe clamp it's 11 metric but the thing about our turbo elbow is there is a pin in the uh in this elbow that orients the this elbow in one way so when you go to remove this once you get your clamp loosened up just like anything else, go ahead and you loosen your clamp up and then, you know, pop your ears off away from the elbow as such. And when you go to remove it, you will have to pull it straight back so that the pin clears the turbine housing. So we're going to cut here and I'm going to go ahead and get this clamp off and then I'll show you taking the, um, taking the, the elbow off. We're going to show you how to take this elbow out now. Remember, there's a locating dowel that is on the elbow and is attached in the turbine housing here. So when you were pulling this out, we're going to pull our down pipe down just like so, and we're going to pull straight back on that elbow. And I'm going to show you the elbow when it comes out here. What we're talking about. You got that little bitty dowel that holds it in position and clocks it right. So, you know, taking this off, this just makes it easier for us to get the turbo out of the truck. So this is our turbo elbow off the truck. Adam calls these fireside chats. So um, one thing, if you, you know what, if you got to this point in the video and you're watching, we hope that you have had a uh, fairly uneventful uh, uninstallation of your stock turbo. Um, going forward from here, one of the, one of the uh, more difficult parts of this install is getting to the bolts on the oil drain tube. And we're gonna show you Fleece's uh, new drain tube that they've got that makes the installation a lot easier. But one thing going forward that we're gonna show you that's gonna make getting to those bottom two bolts on the oil drain tube is this uh, swivel 10 metric socket. If you don't have one of these, get one. Uh, I like it on a quarter inch drive. I've got a quarter inch drive extension that's so ever many inches long, uh, probably. 15, 18 inches long. Uh, but this combination right here really gets you to that inboard side 
uh, 10 metric bolt on the oil drain tube. Uh, the outboard side of it, the outside of it is pretty easy just to get to with a normal socket and, and quarter inch ratchet. But uh, these are gonna be the tools that you're gonna need to get the oil drain tube out uh, or get the oil drain tube bolts out of it. And then we're gonna pull the oil drain tube to give us access to the coolant line. So we'll go ahead and show you that now. We're underneath the truck now and we are looking directly at our oil drain so our oil drain is this uh corrugated flex pipe that goes up to the bottom turbo we have got and if you follow my pointer here we have got the outside bolt closest to the outside of the truck we've got it out you can get it from the fender well no problem this inner bolt this is the one that everybody hates this is the one i was talking to you about the swivel uh socket 10 metric is what you need to get in there. So you can kind of see how this is going to be able to shoot that gap. If you need to grab that flex tube, you can and kind of bend it out of your way, but you've got just enough in there and you can, I hope you can see that with the camera to get in there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that bolt out and get our drain tube out of the way. All right, I hope I've got a good shot of this on the GoPro here. Sorry for the lights on it. So what I just want to show you here is the, we've got our down pipe loosened up and it's going to have some adhesion to the bottom of the turbo because of the gasket. So you just want to just get a pry bar in there and just kind of just gently nudge it. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting pressure on it to get it out and away from the bottom of the turbo. And what we're trying to accomplish here is to give us a line of sight to that coolant line at the bottom here. So you can't see really see that, but just know that that coolant line is flexible we're going to be installing the new uh oil drain tube from fleece so we're okay here to kind of manipulate the shape of this oil drain tube if you're not doing that you know just be conscious of what you're doing here as far as that goes so we're gonna go ahead and get that drain tube out of our way now i want to show everybody what i do with the oil uh drain line i just go ahead and slide it past the trans cooler lines uh, and bring it back here and get it out of the way. You don't wanna leave the oil drain sitting directly underneath of the turbo. It's fine directly underneath the turbo, but once you move it to get access to the coolant uh, bolt, uh, if it stays there when you start to bring the turbo down, what it can do is it, it can uh, pinch those trans lines and just, just create problems. So I'd go ahead and get it all the way back here out of the way, back by the down pipe, just turn it inside the block, and uh and and then there then you're in good shape so now we're going to show you the process that is going to be lifting the engine up and when you lift the engine up this is going to give you some relief to not only drop the turbo but to get to your coolant line as well so we're gonna go ahead and show you that now in the engine bay i wanted to show you where to loosen up your engine mount so we're on the passenger side of the engine obviously sorry uh the 18 metric nut here that is part of the engine mount so the engine portion of the engine mount it sits in the uh, engine mount sits down in this cradle that's already uh, that's already part of the frame just a u notch here so we just loosen this bolt up and then we get ready to lift the engine now here at the shop we use a uh, we use a lifting hoist and lift it up on the on the passenger side of course uh, you guys at home you're probably going to wind up having to jack the motor up from underneath and that's fine, you just gotta be really, really careful about what you do. Um, if you're gonna jack it from underneath, my suggestion is to try to jack it, you know, possibly right where, um, you know, wherever you feel most comfortable. Uh, bell housing, uh, the unison between the bell housing on the between transmission is engine, is, is what I use sometimes. Some guys like to go towards um, the seam of the oil pan and they'll actually use a bottle jack uh, to jack that side of the engine up. That works really good too. So you just make sure, you know, don't get a floor jack directly underneath the middle of your oil pan uh, and screw your oil pan up. Whatever you use, make sure that it's a good um, place that's, that's for lifting. If you can, by any, any, any way, if you can do it, use the uh, engine uh, lifting hook that is up top here. I'm gonna let Adam show you this. Uh, this is what we've got. So we've got our bolt loosened up and we're going to jack the motor up just a little bit. Again, two things we're looking for here. One, we're looking for clearance to be able for our studs to clear the manifold uh, 
on the uh, turbo. You will see the engine coming up here and it's kind of creeling to that side. All right, I just bring it up about an inch, just about like that. And that's just about everything we need. And now I'll get back to GoPro and I'll show you this clearance now that we have at our coolant line. All right, once we have the motor jacked up, like I said, I only jack it up about an inch because I'm looking for enough, um, just enough clearance for the studs when they drop out to clear these trans lines down here on the frame rail. When you're doing this, you'll see it. And I'm sorry that we don't have a good shot of this for you. I don't really have anything to show, but the coolant line, seven eighths, 22 metric, whatever you want to use. Um, if you've got a stubby wrench, uh, the coolant banjo bolt is not super, super tight. Um, a stubby 7 eighths or stubby 22 metric, which is something not a lot of guys have because most of the racks stop at 19 metric. Um, it makes it really nice to get underneath of here to get to that. So that's a that's a good tool for you. Um, I use just a normal length 7 eighths and once I get it broke loose, uh, I just continue to work with it with the open end of the wrench uh, and just take it a little bit of the time. It's tedious. There's a couple of things in this job that you've probably figured out by now that are tedious but I just keep working at it and keep moving it and get it loosened up to where I can uh, spin it out with my hand. Um, a lot of you are saying, hey, why don't you just take it loose from the block right there and pull it all out? Um, six and one, half a dozen of the other. Uh, I try to keep as, m as few things on the turbo as I can, bringing it out. Uh, that just makes it so much easier to get out in case, and if you want to go another step, you know, as far as it being your core, uh, the integrity of your core is very important to us here, but you can also take this actuator off and give you more room. We're going to leave everything be here. We're just going to go ahead and drop this coolant line out. Sorry that we don't have anything to show you. You'll know when you're in here, there's really not a whole lot you can do. If you've got to cut, go get yourself a cheap wrench and cut it up to make it to where it can fit in here. Getting the wrench between the heat shield and the bolt is really the problem. But like I said, we're just going to kind of work at it here and, and uh, we'll come back and show you dropping the turbo bolts out. All right, so our turbo configuration as far as where our turbo mounts to the manifold here. There are three studs in the um, three studs in the turbo, one stud in the manifold. So you have your three studs that are in the turbo, one, two, and three on the back side, then your one stud in the manifold that is right here. They all have 15 metric nuts on them. What I like to do is remove this nut here, this nut here, and then the one behind the block. And then I actually, I'll leave these two right here, these two forward facing ones at right here, looking at my face. And then I'll just loosen them and ease the turbo down. And we're gonna get to that point and show you what we're looking at right there. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and loosen everything up and then we're gonna let the turbo drop down. Then we're gonna show you what that looks like with the studs clearing the uh, exhaust manifold and show you what everything looks like. We got the turbo separated from the manifold. Let me talk about this for just a minute. When we first released all, uh, all four of the 15 metric nuts off of the turbo studs, uh, the turbo was very much not wanting to release from the manifold. I would assume that in your older trucks, you're going to get that as well. What we wound up doing here is going into all three of these uh, of these holes in the manifold and putting uh, penetrating oil on each one of them, soaking it overnight, and coming to, uh, and walking away from it. Then, you know, again, we have our motor lifted up, so you have this amount of clearance right here. We came back the next morning, a couple pry, pry bars, and we just worked the turbo evenly. So we worked the turbo evenly. We didn't let one side of it get too far down or whatnot. Don't be afraid once you get it broke loose to pick it back up and straighten it and then drop it right out. So we still have the battery in. Uh, we still have the battery in. Again, I like to use the battery as a spot to rest my arms. I know it sounds dumb, but you guys will understand it as you're working on this trucks. And what I like to do to start preparing to bring this turbo out is I like to take the turbo and I like to just can it to where the actuator, to where the studs will be free of the manifold completely. And we've got the actuator to where it's kind of pointing upwards. And I'm gonna do that right now. And all I'm doing is just taking the turbo again and turning it like so to prepare it for lift off here. I'm having a problem with the coolant line. I don't know why that coolant line is one 
to come with me. It shouldn't be. Okay. Now I got it. All right. Now, turn the turbo just like so. And it kind of rested right there. And it's pretty well ready to come out. I am going to go ahead and remove this battery. I, again, preach it, preach it, preach it. Take this battery out. Because first thing you're going to want to do when you get it up here is sit it down. And if you sit it down in that tray <coughs> and you make contact across two posts, 4th of July. We don't like 4th of July. So we're going to go ahead and remove the battery now. We got our battery out, folks. And here we come with the turbo out through here. And you'll see once we get past the comp cover right here we just got to keep working and keep moving I move that wire right there from the righty she's out all right, Adam kind of wanted to recap what we did there because we did a lot in that shot. And I got to be 100% honest with you. A lot of you guys are going to watch this video. If you are immersed in the middle of the job, you know, we've shown you what to do here, how to get the turbo out. Uh, you guys that have done these quite a few times, you shops that are watching it. Um, I, I talked to several different shops that we deal with just to see what every everybody kind of did before we jumped into this because I know how we do it, but I wanted to see what other guys did, uh, and I I got a lot of different uh, got a lot of different opinions on how to do it. I talked to uh, guys at custom uh, Cotton's Customs, um, CT Diesel, talked to uh, uh, Head Tech at uh, Fleece, and kind of got a, a, a you know I, I got a lot of different angles of, of how guys do this but the first and foremost thing to talk about here is you know is getting the turbo angled to bring it out um, you know with the engine lifted up and we showed you the clearance between the studs and the manifold here if you don't have this engine lifted this side of the engine lifted it's it's going to be almost impossible for those studs to clear um that manifold i mean that's just the long and the short of it so give yourself all the help you can lift the engine up an inch so those studs clear then when the studs clear you take that turbo and you just turn the turbo to where the actuator is facing up at you with the actuators facing up as, at you it will come out of this area with the battery box in play the only thing that we had to audible on is the alternator wire the alternator wire has got a christmas tree push pin that is inside of the oil housing right here we had to pop that out and that gave us just enough clearance to get it out so we didn't have to take the battery box out we didn't have to really do anything um, as far as the instructions from the factory call for chrysler tells you to <coughs> remove this engine mount we've showed that that hasn't um, that it doesn't have to be done i've got to be honest with you um, you know, if you decide to do that, uh, if you go after those four bolts that are in the block that hold the engine mount on there, um, good luck to you. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be impossible for you getting it back together, but we've shown that it, it's just something that you don't have to do. You've got to watch these trans cooler lines as well. You want to be very cognizant of that where they're located. Um, we talked about having to get a pry bar in the turbo to get it dislodged from the manifold. Be very aware of where those trans lines are. You cannot be putting pressure on those trans lines because you will not have a good outcome in that. So hope we've showed you how to get that turbo out. When I go back in with the fleece turbo, I don't want to scratch this thing up. So I'm going to lay a fender mat down in there, but we've got other stuff to do in here. We've got to show you how to get the, get the drain tube out and some tricks on that. So um, that's what we're going to do. But we just wanted to recap how to get the turbo out of there in this form. All right, a little bit of prep work that we've got to do before we install our new fleece charger on our truck. The first thing that we've got to do is we have to remove the oil inlet fitting from our uh, from our stock charger, from our core unit, and we need to uh, install it here into the fleece unit. So it's a 19 metric. I'll just roll it over. It's O-ringed on the bottom. O-ringed on the bottom right there. So. You just make sure that you've got your O-ring on when you reinstall it into the fleece unit. And then the speed sensors. This is your turbo speed sensor we talked about. Um, my suggestion is to pick up the fleece turbo speed sensor when you buy one of these units. Uh, this is a low cost part. 
uh, it's really nice to have one of these on the, you know, keep your old one if you have, if you have a problem uh, to roll it over. A lot of guys have problems when they go to take the speed sensor out of it with the bolt breaking uh, in the housing just because of age and corrosion and whatnot. Um, so, you know, you've got a couple of options there. Fleece gives you a really easy option for getting a, a speed sensor. And this is an involved job. So, you know, uh, putting a low cost part on changing that sensor out makes sense. Um, you can see if you pull this sensor out and you are wanting to reuse it, the O-ring stayed in the center section here. So you want to make sure that you go back and get that O-ring. O-ring should be located right there. Uh, the fleece unit comes with a new bolt and a new O-ring. So I've got just a little bit of oil there on my fingers. I can uh, go ahead and reinstall this speed sensor. But one thing that I like to do here as well is I like to get the, um, I like to get the, uh, the wire covering off of this one and roll it over to the new one. So I won't show you doing that. Just cut her off and put her back on. New bolt on the speed sensor as well comes if you order the uh, speed sensor from Fleece. And there you are. So you want to tighten down your oil inlet uh, and then tighten down your turbo speed sensor here. And then we are ready to go back into the truck after we get our oil drain tube addressed and I'm going to show you that in the next next couple shots. Um, you'll notice that the studs, right, like we talked in the truck, there are three studs that stay with the turbo, one stud stays with the manifold. I don't put my new studs in that come in your fleece kit. I don't put the new studs in the fleece turbo until I get the turbo in and I get it situated. Then I put my studs in. It just makes this portion of the turbo easier to get in and truthfully um, you know, if you wanted to really be careful, the one thing that you could do is not put your speed sensor until you get the turbo in and get it set if you, if you feel comfortable working in there. But I'm not going to put my studs in until I get the, the uh, turbo in and settled. So we're going to finish up, uh, we're going to finish up uh, uh, the rest of our, our installation on these parts and tighten everything down. And then we're going to move over to our oil drain tube. Installing the oil drain tube on the 6.7 Cummins with you doing uh, this turbo swap is probably one of the most painful uh, portions of this job. And going forward from here, we're going to be conducting ourselves and doing this installation uh, as we are going to be replacing our stock oil drain tube with the fleece flexible oil drain tube. This is one of the coolest little things that anybody's come out with. Super, super simple, and it makes this job so, so much easier. And we'll talk about um, some of the different aspects of it. Uh, the flange on the uh, on the oil drain tube is a little bit thicker, gets that bolt down there a little bit farther so you can kind of get a little bit better access to it. There's just little things that they've done. Double O-ringed where it goes inside the block. It's O-ringed here where it mates up to the turbo. That's super nice because you don't have to fight with that stupid gasket. So we are going to be removing our stock oil drain tube. Now, if you guys aren't going to do that and you're going to go forward with it, it's totally doable. We've been, you know, reinstalling these turbos on these trucks since dinosaurs roamed the earth with the stock drain tube uh, in place. That's okay. But if you can, I would definitely suggest going to this because I promise you, your reinstallation will definitely, definitely thank you for going with the fleece oil drain tube. So we're going to go ahead and roll up top. Adam's going to show you what we do when we go to pop the uh, stock one out of the block here. So you'll remember our stock oil drain tube right here. We had it turned to the back so we could get clearance to get our turbo out. I'm going to be honest with you. I've already gotten this one dislodged. If you've got one of these older trucks, um, you might be having trouble with this. What I do is I soak this in penetrating oil around the oil drain tube and I start working it. I just, you know, I just rotate it back and forth. Once you get the drain tube where it will rotate back and forth inside the bore of the engine, you just about got it licked then. I mean, you really do. You just about got it beat then. So I just move it back and forth. And I, once I get it going, I get, get the O-rings broke free. I'll just go ahead and grasp it and pull straight up. And I kind of wiggle it as I bring it up and straight out. So um, that's what we do with that. 
Now, what I'll do, and do not use emery cloth, I'll use a little bit of Brillo pad right there inside of that. I'll go in and I'll clean that out. I'll smooth that up, and that helps me reinstall my fleece uh, drain tube. I do not put the fleece drain tube in before I put the turbo in. That's another thing that we do different. We we don't put the, the drain tube in until we until we get the turbo mounted. The reason why we do that, and that's part of the what's really nice about this fleece uh, oil drain tube. Um, it's so flexible that you can get it in there, um, you know, whenever you're ready to do it. I do block that hole off so no contaminants get down into your engine oil, and then we go ahead and set our turbo in. So we've got our oil fitting and our turbo speed sensor installed on the turbo and we're ready to go back in the truck. So I just wanted to show you what we try to get ready before we go back in. And fleece includes all this in the kit. You will have uh, four brand new studs. I got three here in the tray because I've already put my single one in the manifold here. A new T3i uh, turbo flange gasket, uh, new nuts for the studs. And then I have these two uh, coolant washers ready to go because when I set the turbo in, I'm going to put the coolant line on it first and get it tightened down before we go with the oil drain. So we have all this ready to go. And when we go to set the truck into the engine bay, what we like to do is we like to sit a car mat or something uh, soft in there. And that, that protects the turbo when you sit it in. Because I'll go. what I'll do is I'll set the turbo in here. I'll set it down and just rest it on this mat, a good thick mat, piece of carpet, whatever you want to do. Uh, and that'll let you get the turbo in. When I install the turbo, I don't put it in with the studs in. I leave the studs out of it and I, I put it in there. Then once I set the turbo down, I've got enough time, I can install my studs and get them in and then, uh, and then take everything to the manifold. So we're gonna go ahead and start weaseling the turbo in just like last time. Uh, we oh. The director says I gotta turn the light on. All right. Just like last time, we're gonna wanna try to snake this in with the actuator up and I'll show you that. So I take the turbo and I kind of sit it over here around the battery box. And at that point, I'll turn the turbo just like so. And then I'll start easing it. And then once I've got it in there, I just turn it over just like that. And then the, the foot is right there in my face and I can put my studs in it and then prep everything up. We do have the engine raised up uh, to get us ready to clear that. So again, we've got our replacement stud in. We're ready to go there and then we'll lay the turbo in and uh, we're gonna go ahead and put our studs on now. All right, so when you get your, your turbo prep, we've got our uh, foot gasket on, everything ready to go. We're going for the manifold here. Um, there's, you just need to have uh, one of the, you need to have one of the nuts in your hand. <laughs> I was going for the other camera. You need to have one of those in your hand because you want to go ahead and catch it right here. That's what this stud is for, is for mounting, and then we'll come to the other three. So we'll start easing the turbo in. Your two outers are lined up here. All right. Now, when I've got it lined up the way I do, I'm just gonna keep, keep working it back and forth, and maybe even check the back side for some pressure. So, if you can have someone to help you, it makes it really nice. And that's what Adam's gonna do now. So we're gonna kind of wiggle it too too much your way, Adam. Take okay. it back towards the engine. So kind of a recap of what we wound up doing there. It took both Adam and I uh, to get the turbo up. Once you get the turbo positioned and you get line of sight to that back stud, best thing to do is have someone down below as well 
to rock the turbo because it has to be, you can't have the engine like this and then the turbo like this. The studs won't meet up. You've got to have it parallel with each other for it to be able to mate it's like that. And it just took two of us um, to get that lined up. So now we've got it hung. So uh, coolant line is the next uh, thing that we're going to attack here. I leave everything loose like this. I, I leave it loose so I can get to everything. Getting to the coolant line, as we've showed you, is a nightmare. So we're going to leave everything loose so we can move the turbo around as we need to. But everything is out of the way here. Uh, I've got the speed sensor out of the way and, and all the things. So we're going to go for the coolant line now. This is the magic tool that we use to get the coolant banjo bolt. It's just a 7 8 wrench. We cut it down to where you can get it in there. And then when you're at the uh, banjo bolt, you're just putting just a little bit on it and you're just going just a little bit at the time. I couldn't remember if I told you what we used on this or not, but I think we're going to come out with a tool one of these days that makes this a lot easier for you guys. So stay tuned for that. Now it's time to attach our coolant line. This is the worst part of this job, in my opinion. So get your coolant banjo bolt out and you get new washers as provided by fleece. Put a new one on the bottom, have your top one ready to go. And I know that you can't really see this, but what I'm doing with the coolant line here is I'm pushing it back towards the block. And then that lets me get the banjo bolt through the coolant line. And then once I've done that, I'll pull it back towards the heat shield and just let the heat shield hold it up. And then I'll put my, um, I will put my, my washer on the other side of the banjo bolt. And this sucks. So like I said, there's not really a shot here for you to see. Um, yeah really not a shot for you to see and i don't have a good way to tell you to do this you just got to keep fighting with it i mean really honestly that's you got to do is just keep your hands fighting with it so we're going to go ahead and get that on the coolant line and get it on the bottom of the turbo here after i get the coolant line on i kind of bounce around i've got a, a, a pattern of stuff i like to work with once i get the coolant line on and get everything tightened up i like to come back up and i like to go ahead and tighten the turbo down on the four uh, nuts that connected to the manifold uh, use a little bit of high temp anti-seize grease here. I'll go through and I'll take the I'll take the, the, the nuts back off and then I'll put a little anti-seize on here. And then as I'm tightening these down, I tighten these down kind of crisscross. So I'll do, you know, the forward one and then the outside one back and then I'll crisscross and I feel like that brings the turbo back because if you, that brings the turbo up flat and uh, correctly. If you do the fronts and then the backs and don't pay attention to what you're doing, you'll get one side or the other tighter than the other, and then you'll have yourself a leak. So you do not want to leak at the manifold, that's for sure. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through, and we're going to take the nuts back off. We're going to put a little bit of anti-seize on everything, and we are going to uh, just go ahead and draw the turbo up to the manifold and get it tightened up. We want to make sure that we do everything that we can to highlight how good of a product this flexible oil drain tube is from fleece this makes this job so much easier so we've got our gopro gopro can talk pointed directly at the hole in the block where the drain tube goes and nice thing about this we can do whatever we want to with it manipulate it to get it where it needs to be i'm going to try to keep my hands out of the way here um but for the drain tube, we just get it lined up the block, put a little bit of oil on the tube itself, and then give it a good shove. And there you go. And that's it. It's already, you can turn it to get it into position where it needs to, where the drain needs to be. You just make sure you don't get it in any type of a kink whatsoever get both o-rings seated in the block and there you go i'm going to move that back i'm going to bring a light back up here to this so you can see it in the block and there you are and then had to fight anything made it super super easy on the drain tube so now we're just going to get to our two bolts at the bottom fleece provides those new for you and get them attached to the turbo 
I wanted to talk just a little bit about how we got the bolts into the fleece drain tube. Fleece drain tube, again, and I've said it a ton of times, it makes this install so much easier. You guys that didn't get one um, and you're working with a stock drain tube, it's okay, it's no problem. You can get this done without it. Um, but this quarter inch drive extension that I use is probably 18 inches long. And then that 10 metric swivel socket is the key to this. It really is. And with this setup right here, I'm actually able to get to the bolts on the drain tube from outside of the truck. I can sit out here and manipulate this extension to the bolts on the drain tube just like so and then the the uh the swivel socket makes it to where i can tighten them up so i've, I've already got those tightened up and on but that 10 metric swivel socket if you don't have one of these get yourself one get yourself a whole set of quarter inch drive um swivel sockets and in the extension, and you won't have any problem getting to the bolts on the drain tube. All right, so we're gonna be putting the exhaust elbow onto the turbo now. The exhaust elbow on the turbo, like we talked about, there's a really, really small dowel in this, and that is for alignment onto the exhaust housing of the turbo. It can only go on there one way. Um, the elbow has a gasket on it from factory. I know a lot of guys toss this, that we're gonna replace it. Uh, it's a heat gasket and it, it helps with sealing to the downpipe. So we offer the new uh, gaskets on the website and they've got teeth on them. So they kind of hold on that elbow right there, uh, just like that. So we'll put the gasket on the elbow and then we'll be ready to install it onto the turbo. So we're gonna take just a minute, switch over cameras and then we'll show you uh, installing this onto the turbo. All right, in the truck, we're gonna go ahead and install the elbow. Again, key to this is making sure that one, uh, you have your gasket on, uh, having your clamp on, because you don't want to get in here and do all this work and manipulating and then uh, not have your clamp on. So we just kind of line everything up the way we know it's going to go. And then you're working to get your dowel lined up on here. And like I said, it can only go one way. And then that kind of lets the exhaust pipe hold it up where you need it to be. You put your clamp on here. Now you just take your clamp, set it over the back side of the turbo. I like to turn the clamp to where the um, where the bolt or the nut on the clamp itself will be pretty easy to access for the next mechanic that's here. And then there you go. There you go. So we're gonna tighten this up real quick. And then on my downpipe, I do not clamp my downpipe to this elbow. Now I go back underneath of the truck and I get my uh, my bracket that holds the downpipe to the transmission. I get that all bolted back up and squared away uh, before I come back up here and deal with this clamp here. We're underneath of the truck and we're going to do our transmission or our downpipe bracket now back in the transmission, put both of these bolts back in. And then don't forget you have your transmission cooler line bracket as well uh, that we want to put the bolt back in there as well. So we will tighten these up and then we will go up to the top and we, then we'll clamp back to the uh, turbo exhaust elbow. All right, bringing my clamp up now. I've got everything done underneath of the truck. I want my my downpipe clamp, I'm gonna bring it up and, and clamp it down. And then at this point, we're really, um, after this, we're going to our knock sensor. Let me get the clamp on correctly there. So, and then of course you wanna position it again to where technician can get back to it, be a good steward of it. So I'm gonna tighten this clamp down here for downpipe and that'll have us where we want. And then you can see, um, it makes it a lot nicer when you do your transmission bracket first, uh, just getting the downpipe on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up and then we'll do our knock sensor. All right, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our knock sensor now. The knock sensor will trace around um, with the wiring harness that goes back to, um, that goes back to our actuator and we just go ahead and uh, reinstall the knock sensor here just be careful really super careful with your threads here because uh, you don't want to cross thread anything and the knock sensor is obviously is going to be you know delicate but as we were talking before the hold down for this is is independent of the knock sensor body. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. And again, we just uh, take your time with threads, loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten. 
so you get everything uh, down and where you want it. And we have got the wiring uh, brought over here. I'll put my guard back on here after that, and then we're going to hook up our actuator. All right, we got our heat shield on back here at the knock sensor. Now we're just kind of finishing up our wiring. Remember all three of our wires come together on this side of the actuator, the turbo speed sensor, uh, the knock sensor, and then you have your actuator connection that comes in here. So we're gonna go ahead and hook that up and then lock the lock back. And then we're going to get our clip. And remember our clip goes um, down here and then all holds all three of these wires together uh, and gets them gets them secured right there so we're going to go ahead and grab our clip and install it um, and then we are going to finish up securing the wiring harness at the front of the turbo right there All right, we're running our wiring on the fender well side of the turbo right now. So as you can see, we've got our wiring clip uh, placed back onto the actuator the turbo 10 metric headed bolt that goes there. And then we just put all three of the wires, the actuator wire here, knock sensor wire there, speed sensor wire. I put the knock sensor wire to the back of the pack against the back of the clip there, all the way in and then just put my speed sensor wire and my uh, knock sensor wire in there as well. And they're pretty loose inside this clip so you can move them, do whatever you need to do. But I go ahead and shut that down there, clip it back just like so. And then I've still got movement inside the wires if I need to make any adjustments on them as I need to. Now we're working on the wire holder that was on the face of the turbo. I showed you bringing them off, it's this little thin piece of stamp steel uh, that goes through there. It drives me crazy. I love to put them back on, but uh, this one, the tab end of mine broke, uh, so it's too short to get the wires in there. So I'm gonna show you what we do. Uh, we just put a, uh, just put a zip tie through there, run it through the face of the turbo, uh, just like the old, just like the old metal holder goes, and then we'll zip tie the wires to the face of the turbo there. Make our, remember, don't forget to reconnect your uh, turbo speed sensor wire right here, reconnect it. And then we make one more zip tie connection of these three wires together against the oil or the uh, coolant, uh, uh, the coolant return line right there. Zip tie those together and keep everything out of the way. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna zip tie all this up, dress everything up, and that will have our wiring complete. It's time to pre-oil our turbo. We talk about this all the time. If you're doing a turbo change, we definitely suggest that you do an oil change at the same time. Uh, most turbo companies uh, for your warranty requirements are going to um, have you verify that you change the oil before you uh, install the new turbo. But with this turbo, we just changed the oil on this truck. This oil change has got maybe 250 miles on it. Uh, oil still looks good. So you still need to pre-oil your turbo. And what I use is, I just use a syringe uh, and good clean 1540. And what we'll do is we'll go to the oil inlet on the turbo, just like so, and put a little oil in there. In fact, what I do is I'll fill it up uh, until it comes to the top of the fitting, just like so. And then I'll walk away from it for 10 or 15 minutes. I'll turn the impeller, uh, pull a little oil in, coat that turbo, then I'll come back and I'll do it two or three times uh, actually before I put the line uh, back on the turbo. But that's that's just what we do. Just make sure that you get oil inside of there and get it to where uh, you get good clean oil on that uh, turbo bearing uh, and have it ready for your first startup because you don't want to do a dry startup and you want good clean oil at it first. So. Uh, that's pre-oiling the turbo. We're going to install our oil supply line now. If you have any, um, if you have any doubts about the uh, integrity of your oil supply line, we offer these as well from Fleece um, for the for these turbos. Well, for quite a few different turbos. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and reinstall it now. Remember, when you're going to reinstall, there'll be some residual oil inside of the line. So just keep that from having a mess, making a mess on you. 
and you want to be aware of that Knox line two behind it and then getting it lined up uh, back to your oil filter housing right here as well. Uh, I've usually got a little bit of oil left in my syringe from where I pre-charge the turbo. So I'll put the remainder of that oil down in this line. Uh, just one more step, probably, probably a little bit of overkill, but I'll put that down in that line too and go ahead and install it on my oil filter housing. Um, two fittings here, so remember to two wrench this where you can. The fittings on the oil line themselves are 13 sixteenths and then a three quarter at uh, both the oil filter head and the, and the turbo itself. So we'll go ahead and tighten that oil supply line down now. All right, so we're gonna be installing our coolant supply line now. You get your new washers from Flea, so make sure you use those. Uh, you can go ahead and install those on your banjo bolt before you install it. And then banjo side of it goes back to the turbo, of course, and we'll start it. Start my banjo bolt. And then uh, RA and inside, uh, I'll run it to the, to the EGR riser and reinstall it as well. And just snug them down, two fittings here on the coolant riser. So seven eighths at the turbo and you can snug it down. And then um, you can snug it down and then you can go over to your EGR riser and tighten it as well. So we're gonna tighten these lines down. You don't have to overdo it, get everything tight. Um, and then we are on to uh, tightening back up our motor mount. Uh, we've already let the motor down. I should have said that. Uh, we've already let our motor back down. Uh, all you need to do there um, for this, is just let the motor down and then we're gonna be tightening that bolt back up right on the engine mount. We're going to tighten that back up and we'll be good. Time to put our intercooler pipe in now. And your intercooler pipe, a couple things you got to be aware of. There's a spring clip on the lower radiator hose and there's a spring clip um, feeding the uh, degas bottle. So I just got to be aware of where they are when I go to start this. So I'll start the intercooler pipe under uh, the AC line and that uh, the AC line and the um, the degas line here. Then what I do is I just go ahead and twist it as best I can while I'm working it in here to get clearance on everything. And then just as, my, as I'm twisting, just gotta keep working it forward until it just falls into place like that. Then make my bottom connection. Uh, the clamp is already on the intercooler at the bottom connection. I left it there. So I make my, slide the bottom connection on. And then this leaves you with turbo side. And the turbo side of it is usually a pretty, pretty awkward fight. But put our clamp on. And then roll it back as best we can. And then I started this job without my picks. I'll push it towards the intercooler there, and then that'll give us the slack we need. Try to get the boot completely on the bottom, and then work it around here. Best I can. There it is. Just like so. So we'll keep working with that and get that positioned where we want it. And uh, the way that sits right there shouldn't be making contact with anything. And you are good to go. All right. We have got everything done here and I wanted to show you one thing. I had the clamp on the intercooler pipe turned the wrong way. Uh, you want it facing um, outside and up so the next technician get, can get to it. 
we got our intercooler pipe tightened up. We're ready to go. We're going to go ahead and put this splash guard in. Eight uh, screws on the splash guard, two on here, six, or I'm sorry, two here, four on the back side of it. Then your battery tray, there's two that go in the battery tray, and then push pins here, here, uh, back side there. So uh, pretty standard procedure putting the wheel well in. I hate Dodge wheel wells, so I'm not going to make you all suffer through me getting them in. There's just something about them. It's like a 6 old air filter. I don't know what it is, but, you know is what it is so we're gonna go ahead and get our fender well in and honestly and i don't have to really show this we'll probably go ahead and put the tire on at this point get it off the jack stands and just kind of get some of this um, out of our way so that's what we're going to do here just these little clean up things and ancillary stuff and, and get everything bolted back in don't forget on these two on the back side of it, closest to the passenger side door, you've got your guard that sits on the outside here, and then the bolt goes through it. All right, home stretch, y'all. Time to put our air box back in. Remember to uh, get that underneath of your coolant line at the front, and then dig out your uh, your active air your active air wire, which we have done. And then you want to get it seated in the two standards right here on the battery tray. Once you get it lined up with the front where your active air is pulling in from a good spot and probably would have been easier if I had hooked the wire up, but hook the wire up now for my active air. Come on. Just like so. Then you've got a push pin on the side of the box right there. And then we've got it seated. We're going to put our bolt in here. And then we'll tighten that down. And next we're going to put our air intake to the turbo on. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put our air intake heater uh, solenoid on back on the battery box and get it screwed down. And this is the, the two torque screws uh, right here that we're gonna be replacing. Um, and then we will just wire this up. Wiring it up is going to be uh, pretty much the wires, how everything goes on. I'll try to talk through this just a little bit. Let me give you a couple of turns on these screws before I get talking and forget. Two torque screws. Just talk amongst yourselves, everybody. You'll see the two wires, or I'm sorry, you'll see the two trigger wires and then the two current carriers they pretty much lay exactly where they go the red wire goes to the back on the solenoid here or on the relay here and then the black goes to the front uh, the longer of the two trigger wires goes to the outside shorter goes to the inside so just put those back on exactly the way they came off and then you will be ready to put your uh, your intake uh, pipe on all right, I'm going to show you the shot of the solenoid here and how we've got the wires routed. Um, the, um, this wire that goes over to the alternator, uh, it's got a push pin that goes in at the corner of the solenoid plate, and then it's got a push pin that goes in at the top of the fuel filter housing, or I'm sorry, the oil filter housing. We've got to get both of those back, and then that takes care of those. So we've got our battery tray open. We've got the last electrical connections that will be going at the uh, lid of the air intake. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our turbo, uh, our turbo intake tube on. And when you go to do it, you wanna make sure that you don't, uh, that you get your uh, CCV line routed correctly. And it can be aggravating as well with it. Like a, put it in. And then that got your your CCV tube lined up correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and just start it. Then slide my intake mouthpiece 
over the mouth of the cheetah charger and just keep working to get everything lined up okay so there that is on the turbo i'm gonna leave everything loose until i get my intake lid on which i'm going to do right now get it placed as well start into the turbo mouthpiece and then get our tabs to the air intake box then we will transfer our electrical connections which can only go one way on these two sensors lock it down get a push pin to put it back right there so we've got a couple of screws to put in here and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to tighten down our 5 16 uh, hose clamp pieces and that's turbo then we're going to set the battery in don't forget your 10 metric headed bolt that holds your uh, ccv tube back to the egr bracket here it's a, again 10 metric and we'll just tighten it up and then you need to move your clamp for the tube back around and get it on and yeah after this is i thought i'd hit the camera <laughs> after this uh you, after you do all of this you're going to be um doing your um, battery time to set the battery in now then don't forget to put your battery holder on okay now it's time to start uh, refilling our truck with coolant these six sevens are a little bit different on the coolant refill on the later model trucks uh, what you do is you actually fill the overflow bottle uh, with coolant until it gets you know high in the filler neck right here let it sit 90 seconds let it go down see where that is until you don't see it go down anymore after you've uh, after you filled it up, then you start the truck, put the, I'm sorry, put the overflow cap back on the bottle, start the truck, let it run to 200 degrees. At 200 degrees, thermostat opens, fills everything out. Then you go back and check it after the truck is cooled down and then fill it to uh, the max cold mark uh, on the bottle, which is over here on this side of the bottle. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna fill her back with coolant. And uh, after this, if we get done here, then we will start with putting our batteries back on time to put the batteries back on we're in the short rows now everybody so we're gonna put our batteries back on or put our uh, negative cables back on our, our batteries get our lights out of the way gonna do a once over check everything out make sure that we haven't left a tool somewhere all the things and then then it is time to start her up almost forgot your power steering bottle, you've got to get it back on too. So now, now we can start the truck. All right, we wanted to do just a little bit of a ride along talk with you about the Fleece Cheetah um, on this 2018 Dodge. And one thing that I wanted to say here, um, at Thoroughbred, when someone calls in and they're looking for a performance charger, uh, especially a drop-in charger for these six, seven trucks, it's always really, really nice when you have a truck that is already has tuning um, on the truck before you, you know, before we go with the drop-in uh, performance turbocharger. This fleece unit, this truck, our 2018 truck, has zero tuning on it. This is a bone stock truck, and this turbo really, really performs nicely on this bone stock truck. Now, it's, it, it doesn't have quite the spool up that the stock charger does, but it is close enough that, I mean, honestly, to me, from seat of the pants feel on the charger, it's kind of split hairs. This truck, uh, we just did wheels and tires on. Uh, it's getting ready to go to its new home um, to um, a young man that's gonna really enjoy it. And um, we have not re-geared the truck yet. So the truck is in a little bit of what I say lug all the time. Uh, the turbo is really, really happy right here. This fleece cheetah is really, really happy in this form. Uh, so I can only imagine what it's going to be like with the truck having tuning. Very responsive, exhaust brake works flawlessly on this thing. 
uh, you know, not a ton of increased turbo noise because this truck is, uh, you know, it, this truck is all emissions intact, uh, ready to go. But definitely, definitely, even in stock form, a big seat of the pants difference with the uh, with the fleece cheat on this truck. Beyond impressed. We really are, we're beyond impressed. This is uh, a staple charger for us that we sell at Thoroughbreds. Uh, and it's been a, a huge, huge success for us. So if you are in the market for a drop-in turbocharger for your 6.7 Dodge, we definitely suggest that you look at the fleece cheetah. Uh, for your truck. So um, this install was a big one. Uh, I know that you guys are going to watch this on this on your older on your older model trucks and you're not going to see as you're not going to have as easy a time with the install as what we did. There's going to be some stuff that you're going to have to get through. There's different ways to do it. Um, you know, we talked about some of the technicians that we talked we talked to um, when we were getting ready for this and everybody seems to do this job a different way however you do the job you just want to try to be as clean as you can and just leave yourself every opportunity to not have any problems with the uh, with the installation whatsoever uh, i definitely suggest and i can't stress this enough please 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 consider using the fleece flexible drain tube uh, on this charger it makes a completely different level of difficulty of the install it takes a lot of the pain and heartache out of the installation Trust me, you can thank us later. So, Wade and Adam here signing off. If you have any questions about fleece products, please give us a call. Uh, if you got any questions about a fleece cheetah and how it's gonna perform on your truck, please give us a call. We wanna make sure that we answer all your questions so we get you in the right turbocharger. So, thanks for watching.